Welcome. Day number 14 on Going Carnivore in Thailand. Not really an eventful day. I lost 0.1 kilo, which really doesn't mean anything. That could be a deviation with the scale 0.1 kilo this way or that way. But it beats a sharp stick in the eye. This morning we had eggs, ham, and cheese. And that was it. Tonight, I plan to go over there and put the meter thermometer inside the brisket that we kept in the sous vide for three days. And I'm going to put it in that air fryer at 200 degrees Celsius. I'm going to put the temperature at 55 degrees Celsius for the target. I did this yesterday on the other half of it, and the air fryer put a sear on that that was incredibly good, and it just melted in your mouth. I'll tell you what, if brisket didn't take so damn long to cook, we'd throw rocks at ribeyes. I mean, really. There's just, a good brisket is just great. Do you want to take three days slow cooking it to get it right? Uh, I think what I'm going to do next time I'm at Macro is to buy some brisket and see what the air fryer would do to a brisket. What my fear is that it would put a great sear on the brisket and would bring the brisket up to the correct temperature in the center. I'm afraid that without sous vide it for three days, it'd be a little tough to eat, a little tough to chew. It, that sous vide just does it wonders. I mean, put it in there, put it in, the, in a vacuum sealed bag, dump it in the water, bring the water up to, I cooked it at 66. Next time I'm going to cook it at 55. I'm going to lower it down. I'm going to get it a little redder on the inside. But uh, three days in the sous vide does it right. The air fryer is great. I wish I was able to get the quality of air fryers over here that I could get in the United States that run on 110. But they don't seem to make as many really super high-end ones on 220. For example... I just watched a video of one guy. He has an air fryer that goes to 200 and, I guess, 25 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit, so it cooks even hotter, which gets even a quicker cook, uh, faster cook. It's nice to be able to put your steaks out. Uh, now, I forgot. Stay right there. I'll be right back. I'm back. No way. <clears throat> Found this farm. And just today, a little ice on the, on the picture there. This ribeye came. It's two inches thick. We got six of these ribeyes. Six of them, two inches thick. They all look just as good as this. And cost was just about $12.50 a ribeye for a two inch thick ribeye. Shipped directly to your door in a freezer truck. They came solid as a rock, so they, they were nice and well-kept. Good marbling in them. I don't know if they're Wagyu, or, but I think they're grass-fed. And I can't wait to try them. The, the hard part on a lot of these places, they just don't want to cut you a two-inch thick ribeye. Maybe this is too thick. I don't know. You know, if it does... Think about this. 
if I wanted to make this thing one inch thick, I probably could get a one inch thick ribeye for six fifty, six dollars. One and a half inch thick ribeye for nine. And that ain't bad, one and a half inch thick ribeye for nine. That's a lot of meat. A lot of protein. And, nice announcement. My girlfriend, Noi, it's her birthday today. And she, seeing the progress I'm making, has agreed to try carnivore. And that's hard for her because she is a vegetable and fruit girl. And she loves her vegetables. She loves her fruit. But she's going to try carnivore. And uh, I feel amazing. I really do. So. Okay. To preheat. The T fall is pretty simple. You go to start, you hit function, and you cycle through till you get to meat, which meat don't mean much. And then I want to punch up the mints pretty good just because I'm going to lower them later. And then I'm going to hit this, and I'm going to punch it up to 200 degrees. All right. Put now we're going to. I'll watch you put the meter into the here. Yeah, that'd be fine. Or you can put in from the thick side going this way. Yeah, that'd be fine too. Put it all the way till that line disappears. Mm -hmm. Till the line disappears. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's excellent. Okay. Now we've already seasoned. We've already seasoned it. Yeah. We put our brisket rub and we put some black pepper on it. No, not black pepper. Put some black pepper on it too. I'll do it. No, 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 no. I do. Now we're just going to say start cook on the meter. Okay. okay. It, now let's put, let's take it over to the To here, hold on. Whoops. Now, okay, go. Do not burn yourself. Okay, put it back. Okay, it's 200 degrees Celsius, and I want to make sure that we got plenty of mess in there. So for right now, I'll just punch it up to 30 because the meter block is going to tell me how long it's going to take to cook. And when it does tell me that, then... I'll reset this to turn off at the approximate time it says to take the steak out. And uh, this brisket yesterday, we did this, and it was amazing. 
yesterday we did this to the other half of the brisket and it was absolutely freaking amazing. It tasted great. The only problem is you've got to sous vide it in the water behind me here for three days. Now, maybe there's a quicker way to cook the brisket. I don't know. I'll be doing some experimentation. But I'll tell you, if you, if you have brisket and you have a ribeye side by side, I'm not sure I wouldn't take that brisket almost every time. It just seems like that brisket's just so good to chew and everything. So we'll see how this goes. But I wanted to give you a little shake. Now this T-Fall air fryer here, I was amazed how inexpensive it was. It was roughly $35. Now, I follow a guy that, uh, Farong, it isn't Farong, it's Farong or whatever that, that does the cardboard diets all the time. And he uses this thing called a Dreo Chef Maker, which is hard to get. It's not in Thailand. They do seem to ship to the UK. So I'm thinking if they ship to the UK, they might have a 220 to 230 volt model, but whether or not they'll ship to Thailand or not, I don't know. But it's way more expensive than this. It cooks a 50 degree centigrade higher temperature. Uh, and it's got a temperature probe built into it. So you literally can, can get yourself a program together where you stick the temperature probe in that's already built inside there that's connected by a wire, push it in, push a button, and walk away, and it will just handle it. Uh, at least that's what he does all the time. And it seems like a top, top quality. It also has what they call sous vide mode because you put water in the top and it actually adds like steam or something to keep your meat moister. Seems like an amazing, it's called Dreo, D-R-E-O, Chef Maker. You can look it up on YouTube. People have done reviews. So far, this air fryer just for quick seems to do the trick. Is the temperature coming up at all? Uh, hmm? Internal, five. So internal is only five. What's that? Target's 55, five. And then it'll eventually say uh, estimated cook time. A few minutes later. All right, the meter block says we got less than a minute left. When it goes off, this is going to turn off, and we're going to take it out, and we're going to let it rest for a few minutes. Now, the meter block's going to keep recording the temperature going up and up and up. What temperature are we on now, Noy? 49. We're at 49. The target was 55. So... When we take it out, it will keep going. There we go. Wow. Zoom in on that. Look at a fine crust seared on that brisket. My goodness, that looks like a tasty sear on top. And after it rests, we'll cut it open. We'll give you a picture. A few minutes later. 
All right. It says almost there on the meter. So it's less than a minute. I'm pulling it out on the resting part. Simple, easy peasy. I don't want to take a chance that this might be hot. Meters are easy clean up. Now, let me show you how this is going to look when I cut a nice little slice here. Look at that. Zoom in on that. Look at that picture. Now that's just the same texture and color it was when it came out of the sous vide. The only thing this did was two days later, it put the sear on it, which that adds to the taste. But it didn't overcook it because of the meter block thermometer. If you cook without a thermometer, you're just guessing all the time, and sometimes you're going to guess wrong, and you're going to ruin a steak, and it's going to be so tough you can't eat it. But I'm not worried about that happening right now, and I'm going to get to eating this right away. A few minutes later. That's all, folks.